focusing on one of the regions that you study in third grade, the Southwest. And we're gonna be creating a landscape using these materials. You're gonna need some paper, your oil pastels, watercolor, water, your paintbrush, and probably a little piece of paper towel would be helpful as well. If you haven't already, take a moment to look at the rubric for this project. You can see our goal, students will use oil pastel and watercolor to paint a southwestern landscape with a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. So we're really practicing that element of art called space. We want to make sure that we use a horizon line. We're gonna have a clear foreground, middle ground, and background. Our objects are gonna appear larger toward the front and smaller and less detailed toward the back. And as always, we're gonna give it our own creative sparkle and make sure that we're focusing on our neatness as we paint. We're gonna begin our Southwestern landscape with a drawing of objects that you would see in the foreground or in the front. These objects are gonna appear the largest because they're closest to us and also the most detailed because they're close up, you can see the details more easily. If we were painting a landscape or looking out of a window, we would probably see plants, rocks, maybe even some little critters up here in the front. You're gonna be able to be creative with what you'd like to include on your landscape, but I'm gonna show you a few basics. The first plant I'd like to show you is an aloe. You actually may have an aloe at home. They have long sort of spiky leaf-like structures. We're gonna draw them a little bit fatter than maybe they really are, just so that we could easily paint those guys. So I'm gonna start with this kind of a leaf, stretched out leaf shape. Maybe add some more to both sides. Maybe there's a few guys like peeking out here, so we're overlapping. Um, maybe I'll draw one coming over here here and you could do another one as well maybe I'll do another one on this side and remember it could even go off the page not everything has to fit just like if you were taking a photo there'd be things that go off the picture and that's totally fine so I'm gonna do this guy maybe he's so close up front that we don't even see all of the base of it let's do it over here and it's gonna go whoop, right off the page. Maybe some guys peeking up over here from behind. Okay, a little one going off the side. Okay, so that gives me a couple of those. Um, I'd also like to show you what's called a prickly pear. And it's actually not the kind of pear you would want to eat. It's a kind of cactus and it's quite prickly. And it's made up of pads or kind of roundish shapes. So I'm going to start with maybe right here, almost like a stalk just to give us a structure to work from. And I'm going to do some of those pads going along here. And we could have some kind of go over here. They could even overlap a little bit with the other plants, because plants don't necessarily just stay in a neat little area. They kind of overlap each other. So adding those different pads. to do another guy. Maybe I'll do another piece coming in over here. And remember, you don't have to use exactly the same colors. One thing I'm thinking of doing with this pair, and actually we could do it on any of our objects is to add a little texture that's going to show up when we watercolor. And so I'm thinking I might add some of those prickly guys with white. And remember, since this is a resist, you'll be able to see this later when we go over it in watercolor. Add some of those 
dots. You could do them in white. You can do them in another color. Or not at all. Okay. I could also add maybe some of this darker green to my aloe just to give it some variety. I'm also thinking about adding some rocks. Now the rocks, um, they could just have maybe a flat base and then curvy top. This rock's gonna go right out of the picture. Add some little lines maybe for texture if you choose. So again, I'll do that flat bottom. Maybe come over here. Could do rock over here. Maybe this time the plant's actually in front of the rock. So I'm drawing it back behind and maybe there's a little piece of a rock that you see right here. Be something over here too. All right, so I've got now my foreground looking pretty full. As I mentioned before, if you wanted to put some critters or other kinds of cactus, you certainly could do that in here. I'm now gonna move on to the foreground, or the middle ground. So that's right behind the foreground, and it's kind of in between the background and the foreground. And so I would probably still see some of these plants and maybe some um, saguaro cacti in the background. Those are the kind of cactus that you typically think of when you think of the desert. So I'm gonna draw one back here maybe kind of off in the distance. And it's almost like a cylinder shape and it has these pieces that come off, kind of like a rounded, almost like a finger. Think about it that way. Okay, so maybe I have one over there and maybe I'll do another one back here. He's gonna be a little bit smaller a little bit further away and maybe another one over here. Now one thing you'll notice is because we don't have a horizon line yet, um, it looks like objects are floating in sky. And that's actually really important to remember when we're doing a drawing is that we need, even if you're doing it for, you know, a, you're writing a book or a story for class, you need to add that horizon line. So right about here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a line. And you'll notice all of a sudden, it looks like everything's on the ground now. It really is kind of a cool trick. So there's my line. Notice I didn't draw through the cacti, but I stopped where the cactus are. And then I'm gonna add maybe some more of these little plants and you're gonna notice that I'm drawing them smaller. And that's cause they're further away. So there's another little aloe. Maybe I'll do another guy over here. Another one over here. I could do some more rocks. They're gonna appear smaller because they're further away. Back, way back here, they might look like little baby rocks, tiny. All right. And you could continue to add maybe more prickly pears if you'd like, further back. Wouldn't be able to see as many of the details back there because it's so much farther away. All right. And now what I'm gonna do is go on to the very background and we're gonna draw what are called mesas. And you see these mesas often in the Southwest and mesa actually means table. So if you look back at the rubric, you can see here, it's got that flat, and that's caused from just erosion over time. So I'm gonna draw a mesa or two. Remember yours does not have to look exactly like mine. You can be creative with that. You will have like a little bit of the rock structure. If you've ever been to Arches National Park, you may have seen this in, um, 
in that national park, almost like rock structures. In fact, I could even add one right here where there'll be pieces that connect one to the other, which is kind of cool. So maybe I'll just add that in for fun. It's a really great place to visit if you get a chance at some point. I'm also gonna add some texture, some lines. If you go there, you'll see um, lots of the kind of inside of the rock structures. I'm gonna do another one over here. And it's gonna go right off the page. Maybe I'll do one way in the background. So again, it's gonna be tiny. And notice how I'm overlapping this, these mountains. This also helps them have um, a sense of distance away from you. So it creates the illusion of space in here, even though really it's just a piece of paper. Now, further off in the background, I think I might want to add some more cacti. These are going to be way less detailed because they're just way off in the background, but they're still there off in the distance. Notice much smaller, not because they're baby cactus, they just appear smaller. And then I've got my sky. Now I could add some clouds here with the white. I won't be able to see it right now. This is one of the things I love about the Southwest is it's kind of like Colorado. They have giant bright blue skies and these big puffy cumulus clouds. They're so fun to look at. So you can draw some of those in as well. All right, I have my main design now foreground, middle ground, and background. It's time to paint. excited about you getting to make your own southwestern landscape. A couple things to point out. You may have noticed that I allowed colors, watercolors to mix together in certain areas. I also layered some watercolors on top of each other, letting it dry and then doing a little bit more on top and maybe a little bit more. So definitely feel free to experiment and I cannot wait to see what you create. Mm -hmm. 